second. So let's get right into it with senior congressional correspondent Chad Pergram. He's joining us live on Capitol Hill. Chad, what's going on? Hey, Bill. Well, here's what's going on uh, over the past couple of minutes here. Very busy minute. Right now, uh, they are passing the bill to aid Israel. This is the final vote in the series. Just a few minutes ago, they approved uh, $61 billion to Ukraine. You had a lot of Democrats who were supporters waving Ukrainian flags on the House floor. That's actually against decorum. Uh, they were admonished by Mark Molinaro, who's a Republican from New York who was presiding. But right now, there are more than, you know, 366 votes. Getting close to, uh, you know, I mean, there's not that many nays on the board here, 58 nays, but, but look at how uh, there are a lot more Republican yeas for this bill than Democratic nays. I was told, Democratic yeas, I was told uh, just about 45 minutes ago or an hour or so ago that they would expect about 40 Democrats to vote no on this, and so 37 is the key. Now, so what this means is that they, the House of Representatives has passed the overall aid package. It has four parts to it, a curbing of TikTok in the United States aid to Taiwan, aid to Ukraine, and aid to uh, Israel. Okay, so they wrap that all together and they send it to the House of Representatives. Now, here's the $64,000 question. At the end of this roll call vote, does Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Republican representative from Georgia, offer her resolution to try to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson? Uh, that's a problem. If they do that, uh, then there's going to be just absolute mayhem here in the House of Representatives, considering what the House went through last fall when there was the removal of Kevin McCarthy. Now, to be clear, we've been told in the past few minutes that uh, senior members of the House Republican leadership do not think that Green is going to offer that resolution. But if she's going to do it, she'll probably do it at the end of this vote series, because this is the end of voting for the day in the House of Representatives. Moreover, we were told that, uh, you know, she said this some weeks ago, and we should listen right now. This is Mark Molinar announcing the vote total. We should probably listen to the floor to see what the vote total is and if Green uh, introduces her resolution. Pursuant to House Resolution 1160, the Senate Amendment to H.R. 815 is considered as agreed to with the amendment described in Section 6 of House Resolution 1160. Chair lays before the House a communication. The Speaker's Rooms, Washington, D.C., April 20th, 2024. I hereby designate the period from Saturday, April 20th, 2024. So this is Susan Cole, the House Reading Sunday, Clerk. Uh, so far, Marjorie Taylor Greene has not introduced her resolution, but we'll kind of keep an eye on that because sometime in the next five or so minutes, we're in that zone where she might do it if she were to do it. And, and this is what would happen is, is if she were to offer it, you would have this presented from the day as someone like Susan Cole, the, the reading clerk there, would, would read it. It would, in essence, be live. And one of two options were then on the table. They would have to consider it right away, or the House is now done for the week. There's supposed to be a recess now until next week. Uh, the House would have to consider this when they came back next week. But so far, no indication from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But, but a couple of weeks ago, Green indicated that if Mike Johnson put a Ukraine bill on the floor, she would move to vacate the chair, an MTV, as it's called, motion to vacate the chair. In other words, to say that there is nobody in the speaker's chair and you're calling for a new election. If this were a parliamentary system, this would be very similar to a vote of no confidence in the prime minister if we were in the United Kingdom or, or someplace in Europe. Uh, so that doesn't happen very often. That's exactly what happened with Kevin McCarthy, the former Speaker of the House, last fall. And the first thing that would happen if they did consider it today is you would have a motion to table, an effort to try to get that out of there, to kill it, to dump it. And what happened last fall is you didn't have any Democrats who were willing to vote uh, to help Kevin McCarthy. But you have a completely different scenario right now because uh, Democrats argued they pushed for aid to Ukraine. What did they just pass about 10 minutes ago? aid to Ukraine. And so it is thought if Marjorie Taylor Greene were to try to remove the Speaker of the House that Democrats might intervene and protect Mike Johnson. Uh, they don't like some of Mike Johnson's policies. They don't like his conservatism. They don't like his alignment with former President Trump. But they do like the fact that they believe he's been much more honest uh, than Kevin McCarthy. He hasn't made, you know, deals that, uh, you know, with different sides that, that aren't uh, congruous with one another. Uh, they also think uh, that, uh, you know, he did the, quote, right thing. He passed uh, uh, bills, multiple bills to fund the government, multiple bills to avoid short-term government shutdowns. And now he's advanced this foreign aid package, uh, Israel, Taiwan, 
um, also Ukraine, which was a big one for many of the Democrats. So that is significant. So they might be willing, and that would be a rather extraordinary scene if they were to step in and intervene to protect House Speaker Mike Johnson. Guys? Yeah, and uh, Chad, I mean, Speaker Johnson just recently announced that his son it will begin at the Naval Academy in the fall. He said, guys, this is not this is not the time to be a Republican or to be a Democrat. This is the time to be an American. And he's really referring especially to the Ukraine aid, the $61 billion there, because, you know, as, as every the world knows, the world is watching. If Ukraine cannot stave off Russia, Putin will keep going. Next thing you know, he's stepping into NATO territory, and then the U.S. is dragged into that. So I think that it would be surprising, quite frankly, if at this point uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene does try to oust the speaker, because it appears that uh, inside of the, her own party, as well as, of course, Democrats, they're tired of basically the p political games that she's playing. Well, there's two, two points there. I always say, and you've heard me say this, Arthel, it's about the math. Uh, the math might not be in favor of Marjorie Taylor Greene right now. I mean, if she tries to, to make this resolution live, she doesn't have the votes necessarily to oust the Speaker of the House. Uh, so, okay, you lose right there. Uh, also, she's going to draw the ire of many of her conservative uh, Republicans. Uh, she's already done so, frankly, in, in many respects. People who might not be happy with Mike Johnson may have even opposed the bill for Ukraine, but say, look, uh, you know, what are we doing here is just absolute pandemonium and chaos in the House of Representatives. And a lot of people are still shell shocked from what they went through last fall when for 22 days there was no Speaker of the House. And Republicans, I would remind everyone, burned through not one, not two, but three candidates for. Speaker of the House before they landed on Mike Johnson. Why is that important? If it took them to get through three speaker candidates between Kevin McCarthy and Mike Johnson, how many speaker candidates would they go through now? There's an old saying here on Capitol Hill that you can't beat somebody with nobody. Well, they don't have anybody. Now, Thomas Massey, the Republican congressman from uh, Kentucky who was on our air this morning, uh, he's somebody who has uh, signed on to this resolution with Marjorie Taylor Greene to remove Mike Johnson, also Paul Gosar, Republican from Arizona. They're both in favor of kicking him out. Uh, my, you know, Thomas Massey said earlier this morning to Neil Cavuto, he said, I can think of about 12 people who might be willing to help out here and would be a good speaker. But that does not necessarily mean that somebody like that could win on the floor. It's very, exactly. very tricky to do so. Exactly. And, you know, um, I was thinking, so we're, now we're looking at this, the breaking news. The House is passes, has passed the $95 billion uh, fine, foreign aid package, now going to go to and Arthel, the can I interrupt for one second? This is very go. important. I've just been told that Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, is going to speak in less than one minute. That's from the Will Rogers statue, which is just off the floor. So we should be hearing from House Speaker Mike Great. Johnson momentarily. Sorry to interrupt, so, but uh, no, yeah, watch for that. Of course, that's important news, uh, Chad. And we'll talk, you and I will talk until that happens, because, of course, we want to take the speaker's remarks uh, live. Uh, but I was just going to say, now this foreign aid package will go to the Senate. It was definitely a, a, a rocky road getting to here, right here, right now, on Saturday. But it seemed to be smooth sailing this morning. And by all accounts, it seems like it will be smooth sailing once this bill goes over to the Senate. Yeah, there's a couple of things working there. Uh, Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, indicated they would consider this on Tuesday afternoon. Um, there's there's a, a filibuster in play here, not to get onto the bill. A lot of times when you get bills from the House of Representatives, you have to over overcome one filibuster just to put the bill on the floor. That takes 60 votes and then 60 votes on the back end. Uh, the way that this was structured between the House of Representatives, uh, this is what we call parliamentary ping pong. It's a message between the two houses. And so that the House, the, 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 this is something that's been pinged over from the House to the Senate, et cetera. So they'll, they'll pong this over to the Senate, and the Senate will take that up. They will have one uh, potential filibuster there and maybe structure things so they're able to do it all in one fell swoop and subject final passage to a 60-vote threshold. Why is that important? Because you need 60 votes to overcome a filibuster. Why not send it over right now? Well, even if they got the bill today in the Senate, it takes, by rule, if you do things by the book, unless you get all 100 senators to agree, uh, you have to file, this gets down in the weeds a little bit, but it's very important, cloture, which is how you cut off a filibuster. So you mm -hmm. file cloture today, 
by rule, that must ripen for a day. So Sunday would be the intervening day, and then the earliest you could consider it would be Monday. Why won't they consider it Monday? Well, Monday is Passover. Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, is Jewish. They usually take off for Passover. So Tuesday seems to be the ripe day here when the Senate would consider and line up. And, and keep in mind that when the Senate passed this original bill, uh, back in February, they got more than 70 votes for this. This was a pre-dawn vote on a Tuesday morning. It was about 514 in the morning when they passed that bill. So they have more than 60 votes to overcome the, their filibusters. But you have to get the House and Senate in line at, at one stage here, because the Senate passed its version. The House has done something completely different here. And now they're bringing something uh, completely different back. But kind of, again, again, wetting all four of these bills together. That, that's the easier way that, to do it. And so guess what? The House of Representatives is now out. They are out until Tuesday morning at 1030. So sometime in the next, uh, you know, few minutes or later tonight, uh, what we call the enrollment clerks will get together and start to, you know, get some of this paperwork together and send this over to the Senate. And then the Senate will, will package this up, send it down to the White House for the yeah. president to sign if they pass it on Tuesday. And then the president is basically standing by with a pen in hand or pens in hand ready to sign this into law for sure. And again, we're waiting to hear from Speaker Mike Johnson, who, as we can so far, he has, uh, you know, staved off Miss Green and, and others to keep his job, remain there uh, as this House Speaker. And he's going to be speaking momentarily. I'm really uh, interested in Chad to find out here what the Speaker has to say, not only about the process today uh, and the message that the past of this foreign aid bill package sends to uh, the world, to world leaders, friends and foes alike, because everybody was watching. If the, 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 if the U.S., if Capitol Hill does not work in concert, uh, then it just, such division sends a horrible message uh, about, our, about our country. But we're, right now, we're going to go to Speaker Mike Johnson. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.